the transmission team when everything is, is on. Amen. Amen. How many of you enjoyed the service on Sunday? You enjoyed the service? Praise God. So what are we still waiting for? Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. They are connected. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome everybody again to this special seminar. Uh, basically, this is, this is one seminar that you must attend because it will help you. It will bring you out of certain things that you've been battling with in your life. We need to know that the enemy is a strategist. Amen. The enemy is what? A strategist. So what the enemy does is to strategize a way to keep you in captivity. It is true that you can be born again, serving God with all your heart. But if the devil cannot stop you from being saved, and in many cases, he will not stop you from being saved because God already designed for you to be saved. Praise the Lord. But what the devil will try to do is to ensnare you. Ensnare you, meaning he wants to drag your life with difficulty. Drag your life with sorrow and pain. And that is where knowledge becomes important. Praise the Lord. So, this seminar is how to turn from idol worship to a worshiper of God, Jehovah. Amen? Or how you can become a worshiper of God from idol worship. And also for you to understand the consequences of idol worship. Because if you know if you understand, you can deal with it in your life. Many of us think that when we just get born again, that everything is okay and we don't need to do anything. If any man is in Christ, we quote the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he is a new creation. That is what the Bible says. But what we don't understand is that People come from different foundations to Christ. Amen? People come from what? Different foundations to Christ. 
The man that is just a sinner in the sense that he didn't know God. He didn't know what, who God is. He didn't know what idol worship is. When such a man gets born again, then it is a lot more easier for him to run in the things of God. But that the person that you were not just a, a sinner, you have given yourself, this is where it is important, you or your parents, they have covenanted you to idol worship. It is not so simple when you get born again. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> Many people don't understand that there is a difference between just being a non-believer and being an idol worshiper. It's a great difference. A great difference. Praise the Lord. When you are saved as a non-believer, of course, you run with speed in the things of God. But then, when you were an idol worshiper, the devil does not let go gently. Are you hearing me? This one, let me give you an example. God said to Abraham, leave your father, leave your country, leave everything behind and come and follow me. God later spoke to him. Remember then, Abraham did not have a son, right? He says, you and your descendants I will bless. Is that not funny? A man does not have children. A man does not have family. Here, God is making a covenant with this man and his children. Does it not sound funny to you? How are you making a covenant with a man without children? But God said, you are descendants. Those that will come from you. So now you understand the power of covenant. Till today, that covenant is in force. Because we are all, we are all claimants or we are all children of that covenant. Praise the Lord. May I bring you to this understanding. Abraham is the only one man, only one man. The Jews claim him as their father. The Christians claim him as their father. The Muslims claim him as their father. <laughs> only Abraham. The three religions claim Abraham as their father. In the Quran, Abraham is mentioned over 180 times in their Quran. Abraham is only second to their prophet Muhammad. Think about it. But God said, God said to your descendants. And then Abraham had two children recognized in the things of covenant, isn't it? Who and who? Ishmael and Isaac. So, those of Ishmael, they claim the covenant also. Those of Isaac, they claim the covenant. But when that covenant was made, none of them was even in existence. In the same way, the devil used the same strategy. Our great, great, great parents in many families, in African societies, they went into covenant with deities. They went into covenant with idols. They went into covenant with the devil. They went into covenant. 
And then, when they went into that covenant, they didn't, went, they didn't go by themselves. Because the devil understands the legitimacy of covenant, even in descendants. When they go to that native doctor, when they go to that shrine, the covenant will be for them and their children after them. Praise the Lord. And so the, 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 the deity or the devil, in this case, will take legitimacy of everyone that will be born in that family. Because God said to Abraham, in Abraham shall all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So in, also in the negative, when that great-great-grandfather went to the native doctors, the devil also applied the same rule and said, I will take hold of everyone that comes from this family, they will bow to this altar. And very often, the native doctor will say, when you give birth, bring them to this altar. Or, when you give birth, rub them with this for protection. Give them this for protection. Are you hearing me? You had nothing to do with it. You never went to a native doctor. You have never taken a covenant or anything. But, but, just like by one man, sin entered into the world. By one man from your family, you may not even know him. You may not even know his name. He brought that covenant into the family. Praise the Lord. When the man died, he passed it on to somebody. Somebody passed it to somebody. Are you hearing me? Somebody passed it on to somebody. It came to a point. Nobody remembered. That is where the problem is. The Bible said, there arose a pharaoh that did not know Joseph. At a stage in that family, one will come up that didn't know about the covenant. And that is why when some of you go to find out and said, I asked from my family, I asked from my mother, I asked from my father, is there something that they said, no, not to my knowledge, no. Why? Because somewhere along the line, the devil neutralized it so that it can become something that will be established. And because nobody knows, there will be nobody to deal with it. The greatest weapon of the devil is not his power, it's ignorance. The greatest weapon of the devil. And unfortunately, this is where many of the people find themselves. Praise the Lord. Remember that the church was established in the book of Exodus. And right there in the book of Exodus, God made it clear the consequences of idol worship. I want us to read Exodus chapter 23 from verse 31. And I want, I'm going to read from the Living Bible. Praise the Lord. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Verse 31. God said, I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the desert to the Euphrates River. I will give into your hands the people who live in the land and you will drive them out before you. Verse 32. Do not make a covenant with them. Is that your Bible? Do not do what? Make a covenant with them or with their gods. Verse 33. Do not let them live in your land. Is that your Bible? Or they will cause you to sin against me. Because, because, and I want you to underline that. Because the worship of their gods, <laughs> because the worship of their gods will certainly, will what? Certainly be a snare to you. Is that in your Bible? Because the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare to you. This is God speaking to his church. 
this is God speaking to his people. God has promised to bless them. God has promised to bring them to a promised land, isn't it? A land flowing with milk and honey. God has made these wonderful promises. But God said, even though I have promised all these great things to you, once you mingle with the people of this land, once you enter into a covenant with them, either by marriage or by any means, or when you worship their gods, despite all my promises for you as a nation, they will be a snare to you. Do you get it? From the beginning, God established it in the covenant that every form of idol worship will be a snare to you. He didn't say they will die. Is that what he says? And that is where we are missing the point. We said, I cannot die in Jesus' name. Satan cannot kill you. Every new creation cannot be destroyed by the devil. But what the devil wants to do is to plague your life. Is to be a snare to you, to make you, to embarrass you, to put you to shame. Are you hearing? So you find out that one of the major consequences of idol worship is a retarded progress. Retarded progress. You will be ensnared. You won't be able to move at your full speed. You won't be able to realize your full potential. You will always see yourself dragging and lacking behind. And it is God that establishes it. Why? The first commandment, thou shalt not have any other God beside me. Amen? Thou shall not do what? Have any other God beside me. Thou shall not have any other God beside me. And you know why? The Bible tells us in Isaiah 42, he said, I am the Lord. That is my name. He said, I will not give my glory or share my glory with any other. No, God said, no. It should never be in that who is blessing you. The question, you know, and that's why when people say, heaven help those that help themselves, then who do you give the glory to? Who do you give the glory to? If you help yourself and heaven help you, then when it is time for Thanksgiving, what do you say? God, thank you for the one you did, though. Uh, the God of your fathers, thank you for the one you did. Oh. Does that make sense? And people say certain things without understanding what they are saying. He said, I am the Lord. That is my name. He says, I will not, sh I will not share my glory with any other. In one translation, he said, I will not yield my glory. He said, I will not yield it. Meaning that I will not give my glory. And that is why Either God is your helper or the devil is your helper. And in Micah chapter 4, God said, every man works in the name of his God. Every man. There is nobody without a God in this life. Nobody. Either God is with you or the devil is with you. Praise the Lord. So, you understand that God is against I do worship. He abhors it. And when God said do not, it means do not. The reason why or one of the major reasons why Africa is where Africa is, is I do worship. It's not just lack of political will. I will show you if we have time how idol worship can pollute a whole land. We're not talking about family now. Idol worship can corrupt a whole land, a whole land, a whole community, a whole nation. Idol worship, yes. So, just you is a small case, but idol worship can affect many. Why did God say to Abraham, Leave your country. Leave your people. Come out of them to a land I will show you. Think about it. Why? Because that 
place where Abraham was living was given into idol worship. God wanted to make sure that Abraham has a different foundation. And so he called him out. He said, and, and that is what we don't understand when we read the scripture. When God said, I will, I will select, I will separate you, I will sanctify you, I will set you apart. God is saying, I will disconnect you from whatever contends with me before I can bless you. Are you hearing me? So, when you get born again, the next step, God wants to separate you. Amen? If ever God is going to use you for great things, if ever God is going to use you in ministry, the moment that God calls you, God said, I will separate you from anything that will contend with my position in your life. And the danger and the trouble is that many people are not willing to sacrifice that because they still have some connection like December time, Easter time, they will go back to their families for the ritual, for the celebration, for the things they enjoy. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then they will look forward to it. They say, what is in it? It's only dance, you know. It's only the music. No, 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 no. It is not only dancing. Listen. Listen to me. Even when you listen to pop music, are you hearing me? You say there's nothing wrong with it. It may be true, but find out the source of that music. Find out the source of that music. There's, there's this thing they call rock music, metal, hard metal music, right? Go and find the source. It is clear knowledge that some of these people are idol worshippers, heavily occultic. Where did they get those songs from? Have you got what I'm saying? Where did they get it from? Where do we get some of our Christian songs from? Think about it. Is it not from the word of God? Or from the spirit of God? Where do the unbelievers get their song from? When you are dancing it, who are you glorifying? Okay. Isaiah, no, that didn't say open it. Isaiah 42 verse 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not share my glory with any other. Are you hearing me? You are the Lord. That is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. Where is that music from? Right from the word of God. Right from the word of God. Who are you worshiping as you sing it? God. So, the pop music, where is it coming from? It comes from also somewhere. And so when you are singing it, you are glorifying the source. You are glorifying the source. It may sound, there was this song that this lady that is dead now, Whitney Houston. Uh, and and in, in one of the songs, she said, I believe in myself. I believe in, there was a way she sang the song. But the song said that she believes in herself. She believes that she is this, she is that, she is that. In the song. And so when you sing it, you don't know. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. Here you are singing that you believe in yourself also. Because it sounds good. Remember, everything that sounds good is not godly. Everything that sounds good is not what? Godly. Amen. So you see that one of the things about idol worship is that one, it offends God. 
it offends God. God says, it will be a snare to you. God says, it will be a snare to you. Praise the Lord. It will be a snare to you. He says, don't make covenant with them. Don't worship their God. Otherwise, it will be a snare to you. It's even more terrible than that. Praise the Lord. And I want us to open to Psalm 78. Let's see what David said about it. Psalm 78. If you know the source of your trouble, it is easy to deal with it, isn't it? Uh -huh. Because when we go to, sorry, not when we, because I don't go. When you go to doctor, he asks you a lot of questions. Where you are talking, he's writing, isn't it? When you finish talking, he will give you prescription. <laughs> Who diagnosed the problem? The doctor or you? You, not the doctor. As we were talking, he was writing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the night, you find it difficult to sleep. And when you are sleeping, you are rolling up and down. You are sweating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you also cough? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who diagnosed the problem? You diagnosed the problem. He only gave you what to heal it or to cure it. But at, in terms of diagnosing the problem, you are the one. So if you know the source of your problem, it becomes easier to deal with it. And remember what I've just said that one, idol worship offends God. God takes an exception to idol worship. And God said, it will be a snare to you. No matter how much you pray, no matter how long you pray, God said, idol worship will be a snare to you. And remember what I just said to you. Idol worship, you may not have been to a shrine. You may not have been to a doctor. You may not have been to. By virtue of family, you become an idol worshiper. Do you get it? It has nothing. You may never, never, ever been to a native doctor. Just like all of us. We were not there when God made the covenant with Abraham. Were we? But by believing, by being born in Christ, we become children of the covenant. Isn't it? We become children of the covenant by virtue of what? Faith in Christ Jesus. In the same way, you can come from a family. Amen? You can come from a family by virtue of coming out of that family. Just that you were born in that family. When you were born, listen to me, when you were born, when you were born, you didn't know what they did. They may have sprinkled water on you. I, 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 I heard a story about somebody gave birth and then the mother went to the hospital to visit the child that the daughter gave birth to. And in the hospital, opened the mouth of the new baby and spit into the baby. And said some things. Are you hearing me? The child did not know anything. I spit. I've had also the one that babies were giving birth to. The grandma went, carried the baby, put the baby down, and used her leg and go around the baby like this every morning and made incantation. Did the baby know? The baby did not know. The baby did not know. And so, the baby becomes an adult. 30 years later, the baby comes to church. And then when the anointing comes, the baby starts manifesting. The pastor calls the, baby, the, the, the adult now. Have you ever been to a native daughter? No. No, I was educated in church. I've always been to church. Never. He said, your parents. No. The parents said, we have never been to a native daughter. It was done by the grandmother or the grandfather. It was done right there when the baby was giving birth to. The mother didn't know. She was sleeping. Are you hearing me? That 
is the wickedness of hell. There's one, the baby, they will take the hair from the baby. They will take the hair of the baby. You don't know. Newborn baby. They will just take the hair. Take it to the shrine. As long as this hair is here, wherever he goes in life, this baby will always come back to this shrine. Did the mother know? No. Did the father know? No. And so the boy became very intelligent in school. At certain point in school, something will happen. Something will happen. The moment it happens, a very brilliant boy, suddenly he begins to lose it. And the boy will say, I, Mama, I read the way I used to read. The father will say, you don't read anymore. You know, he said, Daddy, I read. I read. And the boy will spend more time reading. More time reading. And yet, we lack more and more understanding. He will pray and fast. Labor himself. You know why? The appointed time in the other world has come into force. And you know what? They will start praying. When there was no solution, somebody would recommend, why don't we go and visit a native doctor? I hear somebody, that is the beginning of the journey backwards. Praise the Lord. This is, this is the way it goes. This is the way it goes. And that is why when Christians want to give birth, don't be careless in the hospital where you give birth to. Don't be careless who handles your delivery. Don't be careless what happens in that, in that theater where the wife is giving birth. Don't be careless. The devil have his agent in the in those places. Are you hearing me? It is for that reason we need Christian hospitals. It is for that reason that we need to know those that with a sound foundation in Christ when it comes to child delivery. Because a lot of damage can be done at childbirth. Or you, or you don't know. Or you don't know. What did Pharaoh say to the midwives in Egypt? Are you hearing me? What did Pharaoh say? Pharaoh said, if any Israelite gives birth to a baby boy, what do you do? Kill them. That was an instruction from the king. That was an instruction from the king. Are you hearing me? In our time and season, they may not kill, but maybe take your blood from them. When any Christian give birth in this hospital, make sure you get their blood. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Praise the Lord. I know somebody that went to a hospital in Nigeria here for operation. They finished doing everything they needed to do. And then one doctor was the one in shift to look after the person. And the doctor said, um, they've done everything, but I need to take a blood sample to go and run a test. The person said, why? He said, because he needs to run a test. The person called me. He said, Pastor, look, look. I said, don't allow it. The doctor that handed over to him didn't say there was a need for blood test. And now, this doctor is just taking over from night to morning, needs a blood test to run a test in the morning. For what? Are you hearing me? Sometimes we are too careless, too carefree. Because the enemy is always looking for a way. And then it was an argument. And eventually the person said, no, no, no. You are not going to run any test on me in the morning when the other doctors come. And then the morning came, the other doctors came. Say, how are you feeling? Say, fine. 
hoping to say that did they run the test? Did they do this? There was no mention of it throughout. Are you hearing me? The person was discharged. There was no mention of requirement of blood. But it was a doctor that was asking for it in the night. In the night, he was running the night shift. Sometimes when we all hear tests, we say, hey, do tests now, let me know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do, do tests now, test. They will use you as a tester. And after the test, you notice that something begins to happen in your life. Something. And then you continue going back for tests. You wouldn't know the source. Have you been to a native doctor? No. Have you been involved in idol worship? No. What happened? You went to hospital with your money. And then you bought trouble. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And so, if your blood can be played about with, the enemy can play about with your life. In Psalm 78, from verse 50. Listen, I'm not having this seminar to scare anybody. I am having this seminar to open your eyes. To let you know. And thank God, we have many Christian hospitals these days. All around. Are you hearing me? We have. Do you know that idol worshippers will never come to a Christian hospital? But Christians will carry themselves foolishly to their own hospital. They will never. They don't believe I don't care. Uh, believe I don't care. Any nearest hospital, any nearest, they said as they were treating the person, the person passed away. My friend told me, who is a doctor? They brought a man to their hospital. And the man was so sick and so weak, they couldn't find the vein. Are you hearing me? They couldn't find the vein. And they needed to inject the person in the vein. And so this doctor friend of mine was just passing by the, the hall. When he saw what was going on, he said, what is the problem? They said, this man is very sick. And they are trying to inject him in the vein. They, couldn't, they can't find any vein because everything, they say, it has disappeared. He said, okay. Um, he said, hold on, hold on, hold on. He stopped them. Now, he said he took the guy's vein and said, in the name of Jesus, I command the vein to show up. In the name of Jesus, I command the vein to show up. In their presence, a vein just popped up. Are you hearing me? He said, give me the injection. He injected the person. And they said, leave, the, leave him now. Don't touch him again. I walk away. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. They would have been looking for a vein and the guy will pass away. They would have been looking for a vein and the person will pass away. And what would they say? We were trying to treat him. So we were trying to treat him. We were trying to treat him. When we pray for those that are not well. Even if our prayer does not heal that person on the spot, our prayer can keep that person alive till when the right help medically will arrive. That's what people don't notice. That's what people don't know. When pastor or your leaders or Christian brothers and sisters are praying for you, their prayer may not bring the instant healing you are looking for, but their prayer can keep you alive till the right medical help will show up. And God will be glorified. And then the person goes and says, actually, they were praying, 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 nothing happened. No. Praying, 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 nothing happened no, until the doctor showed up. Their prayer kept death away. Say hallelujah. I want us to read what David said about Israel. Maybe this will help you. We will read two scriptures from Psalm 78. And then another one from uh, Psalm 106. But let's start from Psalm 78, from verse 56. Praise the Lord. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 78, from verse 56. Yet they tested and provoked the Most High God and did not keep his testimonies. Verse 57. 
but turned back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. Amen? Verse 58. For they provoked him to anger with their what? High places. And moved him to jealousy with what? With their what? Is that not idols? So idol worship provokes God. It provokes God. It provokes him to anger. It provokes him to jealousy. Because you are giving his glory. You are saying that it's not God that made you. This stone made me. You are saying the stone is your creator. The wooden image is your creator. And so you take what belongs to God, his glory, his honor, and then you give it to idols. You give it to stones. If you are God, how would you feel? Have you seen anybody that bought Mercedes and went to Peugeot and said, you are a good car ma manufacturer? They say, why? He said, I just bought one of your car. He said, yeah, which one did you buy? He said, Mercedes 450. They said, what did you say? I said, I just bought, a, bought one of your car. Mercedes 450. He said, but you are in Peugeot. He said, I know, car is car. Does it make sense? And uh, first, they will be angry with you. And two, if you don't take them, they will call security. Are you hearing me? Or three, they will call doctors that you are mad. And that is what happens to uh, when anybody calls stone, wooden image, idols, and began to worship them. God looks at you. He said, you want to provoke me. And the Bible said they provoked him. They provoked the most high God. Amen. And then let's see the consequences. And, and when a man provokes his God, don't expect blessings from him. Amen. When a man provokes his God, don't expect blessings from him. Verse 59. Are we there? When God heard this, what happened? He was furious and greatly. Is that love for you? When God is furious and greatly abhorred, like you, de you detect Israel. Verse 60, what happened? So that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had placed among them. God separated himself from them. Are you hearing me? God separated himself. God disconnected from idol worship disconnects you from God. Idol worship hey, makes God to leave you. And then the devil, what would the devil do? The devil will move in. The devil will move in. Praise the Lord. Verse 61. And delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. God is saying, when he withdrew, what happened? The enemy took over. Bondage came. Shame came. Dishonor came. He's there. He's there. And delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy. That is God folds his hand over you. You want to serve idols. Let me see how idol will save you. Suddenly. When we read it in Psalm 106, you will see it better. Praise the Lord. Verse 62. Psalm 78, verse 62. He also gave his people over to the sword and was furious with his inheritance. They began to kill them. They began to die. Verse 63. The fire consumed their young men. And their maidens were not given in marriage. Say terrible. This is one of the most pronounced effects of idol worship. Young men die before their time. Beautiful daughters, but they don't get married. Beautiful women. They are what any woman, any man would desire to have as a wife, but nobody will marry them. Nobody. Why I do worship? It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Amen? 
the fire consumed their young men and their maidens were not given in marriage. Is that in your Bible? Because of idol worship. We are talking about a nation that is God's own people. We are talking about a nation that God loves. Just because they went into idol worship, the Bible said fire in our situation, in our generation. It may not be a literal fire, but you still see pandemics, sickness, diseases. We begin to afflict people. Are you hearing me? Death and destruction will be on people. People will begin to suffer all manner of sicknesses, all manner of diseases. But you see, one of the pronounced ones are also one of the easiest to deal with. When the Bible said there are young men begin to die before their time, there are young ladies were not getting married. I have seen this in many families. My friend, my friend told me a story about a family. Their young, their women don't get married. Are you hearing me? Even if they get married, it doesn't last. Poof, it will scatter. Poof. And there was one particular one, so pretty, she will enter into a relationship. You know what? Within two, three months, it will scatter. She will enter into a relationship. Two, three months, it will scatter. They have prayed, and then they've gone around native doctors. They decided to come and meet deliverance minister. And then when they came to see this man, he, he said, if you look at the woman, you'll be asking, why can't this woman get married? Tall, beautiful, and all that. Why can't she get married? And then my friend said, as they went into praying and fasting, the Lord said to him, there is a, an egg that is placed somewhere in the mountain. And until that egg is broken, nobody will get married in that family. And God said, nobody can reach there where the egg is placed because the, the family have a covenant running. And that covenant, that covenant, nobody can break it. When Jesus said, I give you power and authority, I was explaining to you on Sunday. I said, power and authority means, you know, you have, you have first the control. You have the order. Then authority, you have the legitimacy to revoke every covenant of the devil. You have God, Christ has given us the legitimate authority. We can nullify any covenant, no matter where it was made. And so, when they were praying, God said, pray that I will break that egg upon that mountain. Otherwise, nobody will ever get married. And they began to pray. You see, the young lady didn't know what was following her. It has been done many years. And here she is with all that a woman can be. But there is no husband. There's no husband. And so they began to pray. They prayed until the Lord said, it is done. Authority to revoke. Authority to revoke. He says, they are young maiden, meaning that they are ladies. We're not talking about, we're not talking about old women. We're talking about young when Bible talks about maiden, it's talking about young girls. They were not getting married. Their young man was being destroyed by fire. That does not mean fire will burn them now. It can mean that their businesses suffered. It can mean that all their efforts suffered. It can mean that whatever they put their hand will not work. It can mean that they just are plagued, either with sickness, with diseases, and die anyhow. All started with idol worship. Psalm 78, we are reading. We are reading it from the Bible. David is the one narrating what happened to Israel. David is not telling us prophecy. David was saying what happened to Israel, not what didn't happen. So you need to understand that David is sharing an encounter that the nation of Israel heard because of idol worship. And if it happened to Israel, it will happen to anybody. 
any family, any generation that despises God that goes into idol worship. It will happen to any of them. The Bible said these things are written for our own learning, for our own understanding. Are you hearing me? There are families that you can hardly see their daughters get married properly. They will get pregnant, they will move into a man, they will get pregnant and move into that. They will never get married. And in that process, first, they enter into captivity because when a man didn't marry you and you move into the house, you are perpetually living in sin. Are you hearing me? You are living in adultery. You, you, you are not married. And so you continue. They, you see, longevity is not legality. The fact you have lived with him for 15 years and you have five children does not mean that it's no longer a sin. In John chapter 4, what did God say to the woman at the well? He said, you have had five husbands. Is it not what Jesus said? He says, the one you are living with now is not even your husband. And so, what makes the five husbands different from this one he was, she was living with? The other five married the woman. And that's where people don't make the argument that we've been living for so long, so we are like husband and wife. It doesn't work. Sin is sin. Even if it's 200 years, sin will still be sin. Jesus said, you have had five husbands settled. He didn't say you have had six husbands plus the one you are living with. Is that what the scripture says? He said you have had what? Five husbands. But the one you are living with now is not a husband. Do you understand why? It's just because you met a man in a shopping mall and you went to his house and the house was nice. And now you decided to settle down as a wife. So that no man will take him. So that no man will take him. You run into trouble. And there are many people, the devil has plagued with this. Get married, they couldn't get married. Leave the marriage, they couldn't leave the marriage. But let me tell you, as long as God is concerned, the better thing for that woman, when you hear the word and you hear the truth, run away. Carry the children. If the man insists, leave the children but to run away. Tell yourself, if you're not willing to marry me, I am going to stay away from this. And then, what do you do? Run to a church. Meet a pastor. They may say, who may, they will come to a church, they will keep quiet. No, it doesn't work like that. Come to a church, make an appointment with a pastor, tell the pastor your situation, your problem. Are you hearing me? Let the pastor take up the case from there, from the word of God. Are you hearing me? It's not that I, I chose to be born again. Oh, me, I don't want to do like that again. Oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God knows my heart. It doesn't work like that. You are coming from fire. You know why? The devil will pursue to make sure that you don't come to God. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that, <laughs> verse 63, Psalm 78, verse 63, the fire consumed their young men, and their maidens were not given in marriage. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. This is terrible. Consequences of idol worship. So if you just read from 61, God delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He also gave his people over to the sword and was furious with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men and their maidens were not given in marriage. Their priests fell by the sword and their widows. It's not even a, as a pastor. If you don't change it, the Bible said even their priests fell by the sword. You need to deal with the matter even if you are a pastor. Praise the Lord. Then we move over to Psalm 106. Then we move over to Psalm 106. Praise the Lord. Remember what God has said to them in Exodus 23. Those of you that are just coming, 
Remember what God said to them in Exodus 23, verse 31 to 33. Read that scripture so that you can understand where we are going to read in Psalm 106. God has given them instruction. Destroy the people of this land. Make no covenant with them. Make no friends with them. Don't serve their God. Praise the Lord. God gave them that instruction. And then you also know that the first king of Israel, Saul, was told to destroy the Amalekites, whether male or female, children, oxen, animals, everything. He said, wipe off that land. Wipe off everything that lives on that land. You know what? Saul went there. Saul recalculated that God may have made a mistake. He killed what he thinks will be killed, and he kept what he thought will be killed. And so, so the, the enemies of Israel were spared from eternal destruction because of the disobedience of Saul. And sometimes we think that we are more intelligent than God. God said, disconnect from your family. He said, I can't do that to my mother. That your mother may be your problem. God said, disconnect from your parents. Leave them alone. They have lived their life. Come after me. He said, ah. <laughs> and then you want to, your mother say, ah, look at my old age. Look at my gray hair. She's giving you gray hair while you are 15 years old. When God said, leave, what do you do? Leave. No, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? They say, if you leave, I will disown you. If they disown you, throw a party. Because owning you already is a problem. It's a liability. You are carrying a plague in that family. Okay. Here you are. You call yourself the breadwinner. So you bring 15,000 and you share it. To, and they will come and say, ah, thank you, auntie. Thank you, auntie. Thank you, auntie. Thank you, auntie. Rise. You didn't rise. Where were you? You were running like a pond that was not spread out. You say, I can't do it. I'm the breadwinner in my family. Are you their God? No. Are you their God? When God said to Abraham, leave, what did Abraham do? He left. There are places you will never rise except if you leave. I'm telling you. Even a village, there are villages that are so polluted with blood Except you live there, you can never rise up. I will show you from the scriptures. The Bible said that blood sacrifice, human blood sacrifice, innocent blood sacrifice pollutes the land. And so when you have a native doctor in any locality where the ritualist goes there and they sacrifice human blood and all that, that land is polluted as long as God leave it. Nothing will rise out of that land. Because the Bible said that blood, innocent blood, pollutes the land. So, the moment you find a place where a ritualist goes to make sacrifice, go man, listen to me. Listen to me. It's not that I can pray in tongues. Leave that place. Disconnect from that place. Make your home elsewhere. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you the truth. Praise the Lord. So, when we read Psalm 106, I want you to have in mind Exodus 23 from 31 to 33. Because God gave them an instruction. Destroy the inhabitants. Separate from the inhabitants of that land. Have nothing to do with the inhabitants of the land. And then, they did not. And then we read Psalm 106. From verse 34. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Praise the Lord. Psalm 106 from verse 34. Are we there? Israel failed to destroy the nations in the land as the Lord had commanded them. I want you to underline Israel failed. To <laughs> Israel failed to destroy the nations. Are you more merciful than God? When God said destroy the nation, destroy the city, destroy the community, and you say, no, 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 no. no. God said leave your family. He said, no, 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 I love my family. Okay. Israel failed to destroy the nations in the land as the Lord had commanded them. Verse 35. Instead, what happened? They mingled among the pagans or the unbelievers and adopted their evil customs. Is that in your Bible? 
Verse 36. They worshipped their idols, which led to what? To their downfall. Idol worship leads to failure. You cannot, you cannot argue with it. They worshipped their idols, which led to their downfall. Verse 37. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to the demons. This is Israel. This is Israel. Amen? They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to the demons. Verse 38. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters. By sacrificing them to the idols of Canaan, they polluted the land with murder. Hello? Hello? Are you reading? Was it the whole Israel that committed this act? No. But the land is polluted where all Israel lives. And that is why God talks about healing the land. God talks about redeeming the land. When the land has become so polluted with blood, there is a point where you need to redeem the land. Where the land needs to be healed. Amen? You get together. You organize a deliverance for that village, for that community, for that nation. You gather men of God that knows their God. Call upon the name of the, God, of the Lord. You go to key points, key points, like national, national points. Praise the Lord. You go around there. You stand in prayer. Places of power, places of economic power. You go there, then you organize a national prayer. In the same thing, also in small communities, you organize a prayer. It can be three days, it can be seven days. You call upon the name of the Lord. You sanctify the land again. You do deliverance on the land again. Of course, these things take money to do. It takes money to do. Praise the Lord. It takes money to do. Even in the family, if you want to do this, it takes money to do. You know why? When they went to idol worship, it took them money to go there. When you also want to deliver the land, it will take you money. Don't go and look for any half pastor that does to come and do that prayer. When you want to deliver a community, it will cost you a lot. After all, they took human blood to pollute it. Are you hearing me? So if you want to save that, 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 that community, you need to invest in bringing men of God that knows their God. Because it's not an easy task. It's not an easy task. And so, they will take their time to prepare. Because devil will not let go easily. Didn't Jesus said, no one can take the goods of a strong man except he first do what? Bind the strong man. That's what Jesus said. You can't take a community from the devil without doing the spiritual work. You can't. You can't. What we just said? Where well, we called one pastor and he came and sprinkled holy water or anointing oil. you. <laughs> the devil will say, it's true. It's true. That way, the dominion of the devil will continue there. You call, it will cost you because the every listen every community that went into captivity into bondage every community every village it took human blood to get there to hand over their community to the devil their village to the devil their town to the village it took human blood and to redeem it the only way is by invoking the blood of Jesus and you have to bring the man of God that knows how to use the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Are you following what we are reading? Where are we? Verse 30. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, by sacrificing them to the idols of Canaan. They polluted the land with murder. Verse 39. They defiled themselves by their evil deeds. This is now going personal. 
they defiled themselves by their evil deeds. And their love of idol was adultery in the sight of God, in the Lord's sight. Is that in your Bible? Verse 40. V verse 40. That is why the Lord's anger burned against his people. And he abhorred his own special possession. Verse 41, everybody. Read verse 41 again. May those that hate you never rule over you. May those The consequences of idol worship is terrible. May those that hate you never rule over you. Amen. Remember what the Bible said that God resists the proud. God is talking about resisting a whole community. He handed them over to unbelieving nations. God delivered his strength to the enemy. He said, go and do what you like with my people. This one is not the devil. This is God in action. He said, you will not honor me. I will show you what happened to those that do not honor me. Those that mock me, I will show you what happened to them. Praise the Lord. He handed them over to pagan nations, and they were ruled by those that hated them. Verse 42, their enemies crushed them and brought them under their cruel power. Their enemies did what? Crushed them and brought them under their cruel power. May the enemy, your enemies never crush you. Amen. But you look at this. The center of all this is nothing but idol worship. The, the consequences of all this is idol worship. How did the people that is called by God get to this place? The same way people of today get to this way. By disobedience, by rebellion, you open the door, the enemy takes advantage, the enemy comes in, and the enemy strikes. And when the devil strikes, you always pay more than your disobedience. The devil will take much more. The devil will take much more. You cannot play a game with the devil. Praise the Lord. Because you will never win. You will never win. When God wants to use somebody, maybe you got saved, you develop a passion for God. The only way God can use you is by destroying your foundation and your root. I'm telling you the truth. It's in the scripture. The only way you say, Lord, use me. Lord, I want you to grace. Uh, uh, God, you pray, you fast and all that. God, we said, I cannot build on a foundation of demons. I cannot build on the altar of demons. So what will God do? God will set you in a pattern that will make you leave everything thing that is associated with that altar behind. Like he did with Abraham. He said, leave everything. He said, leave everything. Just go. Abraham was told to go. What did Abraham do? He carried Lot. Just one person from that place can hinder you. Just one friend from that community can hinder you. Just a wife from there can hinder you. God said, leave everything behind. Everything leave. What did Lot do? Didn't Lot become a snare? He became a snare to Abraham. What, did, what happened to Lot in the end? Didn't Lot go back to a sin city? He moved back to Sodom where he was coming from. So when God said, leave everything and follow me. Many of you don't understand. When God is giving you a new family in Christ, God said, come under an authority. I want to dissolve where you are coming from. And, and let me say this to you. <clears throat> when you have come from a background of idol worship, and then you become 
passionate with God. The first thing God will do is that God will bring you under a godly authority. Are you hearing me? God will neutralize the authorities that existed in your life. Every part of it, every one of it, God will neutralize it. He will bring you to under a new authority. By doing that, he will block spiritual access to your parents or from your parents. He will block it. And that's what people don't understand. When God is trying to move them from the, uh, from the ungodly authority to the godly authority, and then they will feel that the godly authority comes with discipline. The godly authority comes with rebuke. The godly authority comes with, they say, ah, my parents don't do this with me before. Actually, I used to be the head there. Why am I suffering like this? Why am I treated like this? You look at a whole me. You are right. You are a whole in me. Praise the Lord. You are, you are right. You are just a whole. And we are trying to pull you out of whole me. And it takes work. It takes work. Praise the Lord. It takes work. You need to understand that you may be in New York. The problem is coming from a village somewhere in Africa. It doesn't matter. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. The more you fly, the more you travel, actually, the more your case become obvious. Amen. But you see, you change. Paul said, I will not build on another man's foundation. He says, a new foundation I lay. And it's not every man of God that can lay a new foundation in your life. There are those that when they see you, they will know that you are coming from a terrible place. They will say, okay, this is a project. This project, we need to do it. The first thing they will do, they will try to establish a godly authority over you. You know why? That is the only way to stop the other authority from interfering on what they are about to do. Because you can't have two authorities running in your life when you want to make a change. It's not possible. Jesus said you cannot have two masters at the same time. So, you are coming from that background. You come to church. You join the church. And you have passion. You have passion for God. You want to make progress for God. And then, God said, okay, okay, I see your passion. I see your zeal. He says, the first thing I would like to do is that I want to shift ground. Praise the Lord. I want to move you from one location to another location. In Colossians chapter 1, it says he has transported us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. What God wants to do is he has to do a holy transportation, Holy Ghost transportation. He will move you from the kingdom of darkness and all that is there, he will, he will and what does he do? Move. He transports you into the kingdom of light. That is the only place darkness cannot reign in your life. That is, and then brings you under that godly authority. And that godly authority looks at you and says, uh-huh, uh-huh. We understand where this one is coming from. And what does he do? He began to push the word, push the discipline, pump the word, pump the discipline, pump the correction. He began, you know, you know, I said to you, when you transform from slippers to shoes, it will pain you, isn't it? You, because slippers used to be free. You just put your leg and you, know, you are walking like this. It doesn't matter. Amen? But when you wear shoes, you can't afford to walk anyhow. Sometimes you'll be paining you. You'll still be managing it to walk with style. Why do you think that women will carry slippers and wear shoes? Amen? There will be a place where they will drop shoe, wear slippers. There will be a place where they will wear shoe and carry slippers. So you see them among their hand carriage, there will be slippers or there will be shoe, depending on the circumstance and situation. But when you get born again, you are transported from slippers to shoe straight away. But it takes time to get used to the pain. It, gets, it takes time for that pain to master your leg again. Before your leg was like this. And now shoe, what does shoe do? Shoe brings it. Mm. Mm. Have you seen some women, even men, they were given a designer shoe, they like it was not their size. What did they do? 
this shoe must enter in Jesus' name. Because, ah, give her this shoe. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This shoe must enter. What did they do? They put expander inside. They pull it like this. Pull it that way. But give it away. Ah. Mm -mm -mm. Once a woman likes a shoe, she will find a way to fit into the shoe. If it's too big, what will she do? Pad it with things. If it's too small, add rubber. The only problem is that when it comes to spiritual things, you can't add rubber. You either endure it or you will not make it. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Listen, many people go for deliverance and they are totally delivered. But because the root causes were not dealt with, because the root causes were not dealt with, you know what? When they leave the deliverance area from the church, as they come out to the gate, the demons enter again. I'm telling you the truth. You can do the deliverance and cast out the demons. They said, okay, they will leave. They will go to the church gate and be waiting. We know him. We know him. Praise the Lord. And everybody sang, praise the Lord, you are delivered. Even you spoke in tongues. As you are going, the anointing was upon you. They couldn't enter immediately. They were following you. They were following you. They know you. They know you. You went home. You were singing, hallelujah, with God. All oh, things are possible, hallelujah. You were dancing. They were saying, okay, they were. You are dancing. They will leave you. Three days later, they were there watching. One week later, they were there watching. Two weeks later, you didn't make it on Sunday service. They said, it has started. <laughs> we know it will expire. <laughs> we know that the fire will go down one day. You were called. Why didn't you make it on Wednesday? Ah, I was so tired. You needed rest. It has begun. Wednesday service. Why didn't you come? My workplace. Next Sunday, you even call. You won't be able to make it because you were told, if you, cannot, if you cannot make it next time, call. You now called. I just want to identify I cannot make it. The devil will say, we, 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 we are not wrong. You know why? They are called familiar spirit. They know you more than you know yourself. The worst spirit to deal with is familiar spirit. Because when they predict you, you will fall into it. When there's an issue, somebody say, don't talk. They will say, talk, oh, you are not a fool. And then you get up. You think I'm a fool? <laughs> we, know, we, know, we, know, we know him. We know him. And somebody said, don't talk. The Holy Ghost said, keep quiet. And then you are holding yourself there. You remember Cantonese. You say, I will not frown. <laughs> And the devil is so bad. Instead of the person talking, when the person is still talking, the person that came close, we see you can't do anything. You say you can. You say. <laughs> Suddenly, you just get up. Is it because I've been keeping quiet? I will show you. Because of Jesus, I've been keeping quiet. I'm not doing anything. The devil said, "We know how." <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that is exactly how it happens. What do you do? You have gone back. You have gone back. Why? Most often because you have departed from a spiritual authority. Secondly, you have departed from the word of God that was spoken to you. Third, the grace that saved you, you have commonized it. I always tell people, Instead of you to get into a situation, pick a phone and call your leader or call your pastor. That phone call may save you a lot of problems. Don't just wait till it gets out of a Pick a phone and just say, my leader, please pray along with me. And I'm facing a situation. Believe me, that phone call, maybe five minutes. And when your leader picks that phone and just says, you are blessed. And pray along with you. That is value on grace. You, you, you recognize that if I continue like this, 
I may do what I'm not supposed to do. You do what? I, sometimes I, 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 I'm counseling husband and wife. And I say to them, why all these things like that? Why didn't you just call pastor? Why didn't you call your HOD? They said, um, I didn't want to disturb you. Now that is catastrophe, what are you doing? Now you have destroyed everything. And now it's no longer distracting me. Now you are now laboring me. At the time when a word in season would have ended it, you didn't come. You went all out. And now you have destroyed. Now two of you came to see pastor. One is looking at this. The other one is looking at this. Pastor is in the middle. Uh, pastor said, what happened now? He said, ask him. The pastor asked him, what happened? Ask how. Pastor, in fact, if not for you, if not for you, I will not be here. Oh, two of you should go back. When you finish, when you finish, come back. I read that by one of our former leaders was sent to one of the east, southeastern countries to go as a peace envoy. He was sent there to go and make peace between two political leaders that were having issues in, in their country. And then he went there, he talked, 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 talked. They said they didn't listen. He called two of them into a room. He said he wants to discuss with them. Two of them came. He said um, he wants to discuss the problem finally with them. He said, he said look, look, Listen, he brought out two pistols. <laughs> he gave one and gave the other. He said, you know what? Kill yourself so this country will have peace. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They looked at him. They were shocked. He said, I'm tired of talking. UN is tired of talking. ECOWAS is talking about, uh, OAU is talking about, listen, see the gun. There's bullets. Kill yourself so that this country can have peace. He sat down. You know what? They didn't kill themselves. They didn't kill themselves. Are you hearing me? We have run out of time. We have run out of time. So we're going to continue this tomorrow in the service. Praise the Lord. It happens to be something that one and a half hour cannot take care of because of the depth of the thing. What do you do at this point? Read through the scriptures. Look into your life. Remember the Bible says God is not mocked. When you read through the scriptures, ask yourself, where am I? Don't come from the angle I've never been to a native doctor. I've just shown you here now. You don't need to have been to a native doctor. A covenant can do, could have been initiated by your great, 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 great grandfather. And now you are in Christ. That foundation, you need to separate yourself from it. That family, you need to separate yourself from it. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about how you can do that. You have known what idol worship can do now. Amen? Amen. You have seen how it can pollute a land. Beyond just going to it, it can affect the land. Nothing good will come out of that land. There is a city in Nigeria. All the men of God of Renan have visited that place. But that place has not developed. Are you hearing me? Different men of God of the highest caliber, they have visited there. Nothing has changed there. You know why? The inhabitants take pride in the idol worship of that place. They will tell you, me, I come from that place. You know who we are. Even though they are Christians, they take pride. As long as you take pride in sin, you are not saved. As long as you take pride, you say, you, say, you know me. You know where we come from, if not for Christianity. You should be broken. You should be sad. You should be saying, hey! How is it possible I've done this? How is it possible? Every time you remember it, you should cry in your heart and say, Lord, forgive me. Are you hearing me? It's like somebody that has been saved. And then you got married and you are settled. And then you have issue with your wife. And you said, do you know the type of women I used to date before I married you? No, think, ask yourself. You are taking pride in the life of sin. 
He said, just because, because of church, oh, I married somebody like you. If it's those days, ah, people like you, I play games. You are playing the game again. Are you hearing me? You are playing the game again. And you know, the moment you said that, listen, the moment you said that, you take glory in the life of sin, life of disobedience. You know what happens? You open the door for the enemy to come again. One week later, you are going to work. You saw one of your ex-girlfriend. Hey! Brother Jewel! Praise the Lord. Is that you? It, it's me. Oh, long time, long time. Eh? Devil is a perfect timer. And then you, you say, Sister Julie. Sister Julie. Wow. Praise the Lord. Do I have a witness? Where are you going? I'm just going uh, along. I'm just going, going. Can I give you a ride? Praise the Lord. Sister Julie comes in. Brother Joe, the prophet, is driving. And then she starts the conversation. Oh, I remember like old times. Oh, time. It used to be nice. I remember how you used to take me to the coffee shop. What are you doing this afternoon? Can we go for just lunch? Lunch? Um, are you? Are you hearing? You just spoke to your wife. In those days, you were not like the people I did. And the devil said, okay, you have good memory of them. And planted Sister Julie. And all the things you have labored for your marriage is about to break apart in one minute. And you didn't know it. You didn't know it. Are you hearing me? You didn't know it. And then you picked her to give her a ride. You were sincere, but she was not. You went for coffee or you went for lunch. You were sincere. She was not. And she was drawing you into the conversation, bringing the topics, and you were continuing talking. Faith comes by. Faith comes by. Brother Jewel, oh, what a nice time. We have had a nice time. Can we do this again with no strings attached? I know you are a married man. That's where the problem is. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us close this meeting before you say, Pastor says. Because we are beginning to enjoy it too much. Because you say, Pastor said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let him that have ears hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Tomorrow, five o'clock. If you can follow this teaching to the end. You don't need to go for deliverance. You will be delivered. Yeah. And what you need to do, you can go back to the message. It's on YouTube. You can carefully go through it. Analyze it. Check where your family is. Check where you have come from. Look at that community. Ask yourself, what is the great thing that has happened there? Look at your family. What is the great thing? Maybe the great thing is that somebody built a bungalow in your family. Three or four bedroom bungalow and there are 20 people living in it. And they are hailing you. They gave you chief taxi title on a bungalow. Four bedroom. Praise the Lord. I do worship. And false honor goes together. Did you hear what I said? I do worship and false honor goes together. The people honored Saul, but God rejected Saul. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your right hand. Say, oh Lord, help me. Lead me 
who do the right thing. At the end of this seminar, Spirit of God, change my foundation. Change my status. I want to be a new person in Christ Jesus. Lord, even as I go into the word, open my understanding. Help me to understand what I must do to be free. For I must serve Jesus with all that is in me, with all that is around me, every day of my life, I will serve Jesus. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. So shall it be. So tomorrow we are starting 5 o'clock on Wednesday service. I will show you, because this thing is deeper than many people think. When actually the devil is not your problem, meaning that you went into idol worship and God judged you. No matter how much you pray, you can't be free because your case is with God. The devil may have given the reason for that judgment, but until you go before God and do the right thing, nothing will happen. We have seen it from the scriptures. Psalm 78, Psalm 106, uh, Exodus 23. There's ample scripture. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And one of the things that moves God is your passion for change. Your zeal for change. Like for instance, like if 15 came, there are more than 15 here. You came today and tomorrow only half of them, half of you shows up. God, we said, are they serious? Do they really want to be free? Are you hearing me? So, when you say you want to be free, your passion, your zeal is already a factor for change. Praise the Lord. Let us share the grace together in unity. The love of God. of me all the days of my life. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name.